Welcome to Electron Line. Now we're ready for something a little bit more difficult. Now we have two nodes, V1 and V2, and the objective is to find what the voltage is at V1 and the voltage at V2. So we need to find the voltage at both of those nodes. Again, we're going to use null analysis, and we're going to start with the node here where we try to calculate V1. And to do that, we need to add all the currents leading into that node and set that equal to all the currents leaving the node. Since we have a source voltage right here, I would say that would drive current into this node. And then since the direction, hmm, let's see here. Well, we're going to just assume that the current will be leaving the node through these three branches right there. So let's go ahead and try that technique and see if it works. So the current going into the node will be the source voltage right here, which is 75 with a phase angle of zero degrees. And we're going to subtract the voltage at that node, so minus V1, <coughs> excuse me. And we divide that by the impedance on that branch, which is four with a phase angle of zero degrees. So that's the current going into the node, is the voltage at the source minus the voltage at the node, so the difference in the voltage, divided by the impedance in between, that equals the, four, the three currents leaving the branch. So the first current will be V1 divided by J4, because the difference here between that node and here, that's V1 and that's zero. We can do the same over here, we can take uh, plus V2 divided by a minus J1, and then we can take plus V2 and divide it by a 2. And so that will be the current leading into the node minus the three currents, or it's ended equal to the three currents leaving the node. Now the next thing we want to do is have some relationship between V1 and V2. Obviously we don't want to have two unknowns in the same equation, so we want to replace the V2s by something in terms of V1. We can see here that V2 is equal to V1 minus the voltage over here, which is minus 100 volts at a phase angle of 60 degrees. So what we can do is replace each of the V2s by this equivalent, and we'll put that in here. So we'll go ahead and do that. And uh, then we can separate them as well. So we have 75 with a phase angle of zero divided by four with a phase angle of zero degrees. Um, minus V1 over 4 is equal to V1 divided by J4. Now I can move that to the numerator and make that into a negative. So it would be negative V1 times J0.25. And then over here we have plus V2, which can now be written as V1 minus 100 with a phase angle of 60 degrees and divide that by a minus J1 and we do the same over here that would be V1 minus 100 with a phase angle of 60 degrees divided by 2. And just like before we're going to separate, so what we did on the left side we're going to separate this on the right side so we can, we can, and then I can move this to the right side as well so we have 75 divided by 4 uh, 4 goes to 76, 19 times, that would be 18.75 is equal to, move this to the right side and move that to the numerator, that would be uh, 0 0.25 V1 minus V1 times J0.25. Over here, I have minus V1 over J1, and then over here I have plus V1 over 2, and then here I have, uh, let's see here, a minus and a minus. So I can cancel these out, so I have plus 100 with a phase angle of 60 degrees, divided by, since this is now a plus, that would be J1, that would be 1 with a phase angle of 90 degrees, and over here that would be minus 100 with a phase angle of 60 degrees divided by 2. Now what we want to do is we want all the terms that have a V1 on the right side, we have four of them, and we want all the terms without a V1 on the left side, so those are just simply numbers. So we have 18.75, 
bringing this to the left side, that's going to become a negative 1. Uh, before I do that, I'm going to divide the 90 into, into the 6. So that's 60 divided by 9, that's minus 30. And then I bring it to the other side, it becomes minus 100. So minus 100 with a phase angle of minus 30 degrees. Again, so 1 into 100 is 100. I move to the left side, becomes a minus 100. And 60 divided by 90 degrees, that becomes a minus 30 degrees. Over here, 100 divided by 2 is 50. It's a minus 50. Move it to the other side, becomes a plus 50. So that's plus 50 with a phase angle of 60 degrees equals, I can factor out a V1, and let's see what I have left on the, on the right side. I have a 0 0.25, that's a real, minus J0.25, that's the imaginary part. Over here, I have a, one, a negative 1 over J1. When I bring J1 to the numerator, that becomes a positive, or that becomes a negative J1, but with the negative here, it becomes a positive, so plus J1, and this to the numerator becomes a plus 0.25. All right, so at least on the right side, I have V1 and terms in the real and imaginary parts that are easy to add, but on the left side, I don't have that yet. So I have to convert that into real and imaginary parts. So let's go ahead and do that. Now we have to be careful on this one with the negative sign. Let me show you there are a quick phase diagram. So we have 100 at an angle of minus 30. That would be right here. So this would be a magnitude of 100 with an angle of minus 30 degrees. But since I have a negative 100, that gives me this phasor right there. So I have to make sure that I account for the real imaginary parts based upon this phasor, not this phasor, because of the negative sign. All right, so we have 18.75. Now this has to be decomposed into the real and imaginary part. So we have an angle of 30 degrees, 30, take the cosine of that and multiply it times 100. That gives me 86.60, but notice that it's pointing in this direction that it's going to give me a negative real part, a negative 86.60. Negative 86.60, and the phasor in the imaginary part, or the, the imaginary part portion of that phasor will be a positive j, and so there we're going to have to take the, uh, take the sine of 30 degrees, so 30, take the sine of that, and multiply it times 100, that gives me 50, so it gives me plus 50 in the j direction. And here, with the 50 and the angle of 60 degrees, notice I take the cosine of 60, which is 0.5, 0.5 times 50, which is plus 25, and let's see, in the j direction, 60, take the sine of that, times 50, which is 43.3. That gives me plus j 43.30. So that has now decomposed everything on the left side into real and imaginary parts that are easy to add. On the right side, I have equal to v1 times the real portion the real part will be, let's say, 0 0.5. Did I do that right here? Let me think about v2, that. V2, V2. Oh, no, no, I made a mistake right here. V1 divided by 2 is not 0 0.25, it's 0 0.5. Good thing I caught that, because if you don't catch little errors like that, your answer is not going to be correct, and then trying to find where you made the error is very difficult to do. But I just realized it didn't look right. V1 divided by 2 is 0.5, not 0.25. So when I add the 0.25 to 0.5, I get 0.75. And add these two together, I get plus J0.75. There we go. All right. So now we're ready to find V1. So I come over here. V1 is equal to... On the left side, I have to add all the real parts together. So let me do that. That's my calculator. So we have 18.75, 18.75. Subtract from that 86.6, and add to that plus 25. That gives me a minus 42.85. So V1 is equal to minus 42.85. And now the imaginary parts, let's see here, they're all going to be positive. 
So 50 and 43, that's plus J93.3. So plus J93.3, and divide the whole thing by what I have on the right side, which is 0 0.75, and plus J0.75. Now, of course, to divide the denominator into the numerator, we have to, again, transform that into the, uh, the uh, magnitude and phase angle portion. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, let me check something before we go on. Looks like so far so good. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay, so where's my calculator? So in the numerator, V1 equals... So we have, what I'm going to do to make things a little bit easier, I'm going to pull out a negative sign. I'm going to write it like this. This is equal to negative a positive 42.85 minus J93.3. Oop, that's not a very good looking 3 here. Three. Like this, divided by 0 0.75 plus J0.75. All right. So, in the numerator, what do I have? 42.85 squared at plus 93.3 squared at equals, take the square root, I get 102.67. And of course, we have the minus here, so that's minus 102.67 with a phase angle of, <clears throat> we have 93.3 divided by 42.85, that's going to be 2.17, take the inverse tangent, 65.33 degrees. And that's going to be minus, minus 65.33 degrees. Now we do the same for the denominator. 0.75 squared, double that, and take the square root, we get 1.06. 1.06 with a phase angle of 45 degrees. Okay, now all we have to do is divide this into that, and we get the following. So we have 102.67 divided by 1.06. That gives us a magnitude of 96.9 volts. So V1 is equal to, we still have the minus, so minus 91.6, oop, is that what I got? 96. 96.9 with a phase angle of, when you add these together, since the denominator subtract 45 from that, that gives us minus 110.33 degrees. All right, but we still have the negative sign here, so this negative will make this different. We can add 180 degrees to that, so 110.33 minus plus 180, that gives us V1 is equal to a positive 96.9 with a phase angle of 69.7 degrees. And of course, that would be in terms of volts. So this is the voltage V1 at node 1. Now we need to find V2. Now, initially you might say, oh, V2, that's easy. All I have to do is add 160 degrees. But no, you can't add it that way. You have to convert that into real and imaginary parts. So we come back over here, and we can say that V2 is equal to V1 minus 100 with a phase angle of 60 degrees, which is equal to this quantity right here. And of course, we're going to convert that into the real and imaginary parts. So 69.7, take the cosine of that, and multiply it times 96.9, that gives us 33.62. 33.62 for the real part, and for the imaginary part, 69.7, take the sine of that, multiply that times 96.9 equals, that gives us 90.88. So what I've done here is I've converted this from the magnitude and phase angle into the real and imaginary part of V1. I'm going to subtract from that, and I have to convert this into the real and imaginary part. So I already took care of the negative sign by putting it over there. So we have 60, take the cosine of that, and multiply 
Oh, let me try it again. 60, take the cosine. Oh, that's 0 0.5, of course. And then 0 0.5 times 100, that would be 50. And that would be plus j. Uh, the sine of 60 times 100 is 86.60. 86.60. Okay, so now I have to add these real parts together. So this is equal to 33.62 minus 50. That will give me a minus 16.38. Because if I add these together, I get 50. All right? And then I add, subtract this from that. So that would be plus j. 90.88 minus 86.6, 4.28. And now I have to reconvert that into the magnitude and phase angle portion, but I want to get rid of this negative here, so this is equal to negative 16.38 minus J4.28. So this becomes equal to minus so we're going to convert this to magnitude and phase angle format. So we have 16.38 squared plus 4.28 squared equals, take the square root, that's 4. Point, okay, let's do that again. 16.38 squared plus 4.28 squared equals, take the square root, that gives us 16.9. 16.9 volts with a phase angle of, we have 4.28 divided by 16.38. Take the inverse tangent of that. And of course, it's negative because the minus J, that would be a minus 14.64 degrees. But now we still have this negative sign in front, so we can get rid of that by adding 180 degrees to that. So that would be equal to, we have V2 is equal to 16.9 with a phase angle of at 180 and we get 165.4 degrees. And of course that would be in volts. So now we have the voltage at node 2 and we have the voltage at node 1 and that's how it's done.